Detroit. Rather be the big frog. All right, we're back. So Gary, all I, right. So I, so Sandy. Okay. What the, the the cyber truck? What does this do in terms of Model S, Model X, Model Three, Model Y? Do you do you see a rethinking? of the way these vehicles are designed and built, or do you think I that... I think you've got a different car buyer, completely different buyer. Um, uh, I, think, uh, I, think, um, I think that this uh, truck is going to appeal to a totally different person that would buy an S. An S, people, a lot of people who buy S's, they want to go fast. This doesn't. They want to they be recognized as having arrived. Um, this will tell you you've arrived all right, but uh, but maybe people would be afraid <coughs> of it. I think that there's a model. I think there's going to be a market for the um, uh, for this thing for the for the three, the S, and the um, and the uh, the Y that's coming up. But I really think they'll be fine. But what I mean is is that okay if if the Cybertruck has a tremendous amount of attention paid to it from the point of view of simplifying the manufacturing process. Are, going to, are lessons going to be taken from it oh, oh, and, oh. and then moved over <sighs> to these other vehicles? Well, I hope, I really true, I sincerely hope that the China vehicle, the Model 3 China vehicle, has, they've learned from those lessons. And I hope that sooner or later they'll, they'll, uh, they'll reverse engineer the existing Model 3 that's made in, in the States, if they haven't already. So I the Model 3 in China is different than the Model 3 I in... I think so. I think it will be, yeah. But Gary, back when the Model S came out, and it was so, you know, groundbreaking in so many ways, but not designed, we kind of, you know, put it to Franz von Holzhausen and said, you know, why does it look like a car? Why, you know, why isn't this as, as crazy? And he said, we have got to establish ourselves for a generation and then look out. Yeah, <laughs> Cybertruck is look out. This, yeah. this, this, is, this is Tesla is beginning? second generation. Yeah, yeah. and I, it, they may not all be stealth fighter or angular, but I'll bet you the next when they redo any of these other cars, they're not going to be as mm. necessarily as normal looking. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think that's absolutely correct, but I I I don't think that every car is going to be angular, and I don't think they're all going to because they'll miss out on uh, so much on the market. A lot mm -hmm. of people. A lot of women buy these things, and uh, and uh, although I know a lot of women who would love to have the um, uh, the uh, the cyber truck, I know more of them that would say, "I just like to have a car. I want to go to." They don't they don't need that 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 look, but they but the uh, the lessons learned on what they get with stainless steel, and exoskeleton design. Yeah, I think uh, I never could understand why we didn't try and make an exoskeleton design. Car. I when I was at Ford, I made a suggestion and was told to shut up and sit down. Well, and, I mean, uh, how much more does this thing weigh with that three mil thick stainless exoskeleton than if you just made this the way everyone else makes, uh, you know, a unibody truck? Yeah. At the end of the day, I can't tell you this because I I don't know, um, but I can tell you is that when we did the uh, uh, w we designed an airplane called the Paradigm. And we did that, we used an exoskeleton design. And uh, when we got done, we were lighter than a Cirrus, which was a direct competitor, and lighter than um, uh, the, uh, the Piper that was uh, similar sized, lighter than both of them. Uh, and the Cessna, because we did three of them. We were lighter than all three of them um, by using exoskeleton. And, and what was that exoskeleton made out of? Aluminum. So we, uh, we developed a special process for um, and it was stamped, which nobody said you could do, but we checked it out. And How thick? Three millimeters. Okay. Yeah. Well, a little less than three millimeters. Less than, so quite a bit less structure Not, than this. No, the structure is kind of the same. Um, I don't have to pass crash worthiness with a small yeah. plane, but, uh, but at the end of the day, I still have to, I, I have to survive, and we just copied the, uh, the CB, and the CB was three millimeters. That, that's why I showed it to you, because there's a direct comparison between the thickness in aluminum and the thickness in the stainless steel. Um, that one, the CB doesn't have to pass a crash test, although it did crash twice and there was no appreciable damage. Um, the, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's the same. It's kind of like this. I was just thinking that, you, you know, you, 
on a small car, electric, where weight is the enemy of range and whatever, three mil thick exoskeleton might not be the play that makes as much sense as it does on a pickup truck where well, you necessarily have a large carrying capacity and so on. Okay, so uh, I have, like I said, I have a Jeep. So when I go out into the bush um, uh, with that, and I do, or I go off-roading and whatnot, I'm going to hit trees. Um, I'm going to hit um, a rock or something, right? And I'm going to get a, I'm going to pop some paint or something like that or get a scratch. What's going to happen to that thing? What's going to happen to this stainless steel thing? Nothing. Zero. If anything does happen, I get out my scotch bright and it's gone. I think there's a lot of advantage if you're the kind of buyer that, you know, that's going to want this. And, and quite frankly, I will tell you, um, a, a little bit about uh, what I know about um, people who buy a Jeep Wrangler. What do you think their second car is? What? An Take F a guess. An F-150. Nope. Mustang. Huh. Either a Mustang or a motorcycle. They aren't, they aren't a truck buyer. They, they're, they're a buyer of something that's going to take them for adventure. This thing here is an adventure vehicle. Um, and uh, and a normal pickup truck driver, let me rephrase that. The guys who buy pickup trucks because they want to do something with them um, uh, are not the same kind of guy that's going to buy that. A couple feature things. What did you guys make of that tailgate that has a ramp that somehow comes out that looks pretty thin in the pictures and that you can drive you know, quad runners up on? What is that made out of? I broke both my wrists trying to get a quad onto a pickup truck with those stupid little hangers that you, you put onto the tailgate. Both wrists. You know what? It really hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> it still hurts. I, uh, I, I can't begin to tell you how unhappy I was because of one thing say, I looked at that and I went, I sent an email message to two guys, the Flynn brothers, that I, the two guys that I know, and they're they're probably they probably already got theirs. I mean, uh, but I mean, what, pay anything. What do you think that's made? Because I think it's like two panels that come out. And what would you make those out of that would be stainless strong enough steel. to drive something up? Stainless steel is yeah. wicked strong. Okay, it's a lot stronger than uh, pretty much any. That's why you make. That's why you're making uh, SpaceX out of it. That that's that stuff's strong, and it doesn't rust, and it's easy to clean with a hose, and you're done. It's. It's I, good stuff. I thought that was one of the most clever design features of the cyber. If truck. they can make it happen, I just looked yeah, at it and went, right. mm. Well, it does happen. They, 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 they drove, I've seen a couple of videos where they just drove a quad inside. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> like I said, I, I have, uh, they're not as old as I am, but I've got a lot of friends that, that have quads, and, uh, and they would take one look at that, boom, or, or a bike. I mean, riding a bike up the or motorcycle up into into a truck, that's no uh, that's no uh, it's dangerous. But you know what? I, I never got my <laughs> wrist broken trying to drive a bike into a truck. But but I'm telling you what, with that thing wide like that, so I boom, I can put I can put my little dirt bike over here, and then I can drive the next one up. I don't have to <laughs> trying to figure out where to put the uh, the little the little ramp to make it happen. No, I think it's a great idea. Now, another one. What do you think about uh, that roll top tunnel thing that, you know, gets dirt and whatever, and then it goes way down into a little thing in here, and that looks like uh, a... You know what? That We use that on airplanes, like, all over the place. Um, uh, those, those, uh, those, those type of... Tam it's called a timbre door. Yeah. Those type of timbre doors... You remember a million years ago, and you'd see these old westerns and whatnot, and the guy would go, Ugh, and he'd open up his desk. That's a timbre door. Sure. Those things are still around. Yeah, I, but I, they're not outside. You know, I don't tell you, it's dirty, and now it goes down in that thing, and like a, you never can clean in there. The I, I, C-17s has got them, and they don't, and they go into lots of dirty areas. I'm okay. telling you, it that I looked at that, and we tried. We we talked to Ford. We talked to Chrysler. We talked to General Motors. We've talked to, and even even basically uh, 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 like military trucks. We've tried to get people to to take just to take a look at it. I don't know. And they said the same thing: it's dirty and whatnot. But I said, no, no, look. And we showed them another example on an airplane where it's being used. 
Well, a outside on the airplane somewhere. Outside, yeah. Okay. All right, Sandy. So, time before last year on the show, you basically said that Tesla was world beating when it came to electronics, yeah. but when it came to the I believe you called it dinosaur stuff. Dinosaur technologies. That, I mean, that stamping the, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, huh? the, that they were, they, they were, and, you, and you, you showed us parts, and, you know, why would they make something that looks like this? Look at that. You know, I mean, yeah. on and on. So have they redeemed themselves with, with the Cybertruck? Oh, yeah. The Cybertruck is, uh, I mean, it's, it's I, I, <laughs> I don't know what it looks like from an electronic standpoint, but if the truck or if the electronics are as good as or better than what I've seen in the, in the Tesla 3. And I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is just, I'll be drooling all over this thing. I mean, I went into the, I didn't even, I didn't even wanna tear one of these damn things apart. I didn't wanna get involved with Tesla. We had a three come in, I looked around and we opened up the seats, took the things out and said, oh, this is crap, closed it back up and told the customer, we don't want your million two, because that's what it costs about for them. We don't want your million two to tear this thing, cost it, and, and reverse engineer it, and then give you a new design. We don't want it, because uh, th there's no market here we'd be stealing from you. Thank you. Get it out of here. And then Model X showed up, and uh, a guy brought it in and uh, said, you know, can you reverse engineer it? Yeah, we can, but why? I mean, you, you, why would you want to do this? He paid us anyway. So, okay, we did... I mean, uh, we warn you if, you if you're doing something stupid, but hey, if you really want to do it, we'll help you out. That's our motto. <laughs> and, uh, and so we went in and we looked at it and, and we had tons of redesign ideas and whatnot, but there was no way I would touch that vehicle. Then we got the, th and then Audi says, oh yeah, buy a Model 3 and then we'll have you tear it down. Okay, fine, because I wanted Audi to be a customer and uh, we ordered this damn thing and it didn't come because they had so many quality problems and one it shows up late and finally get it in and Audi says, oh, never mind. Uh, we have shipped one from California in our private plane. No, thanks. Uh, you can have the Tesla now. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Boom. That's, uh, that's kind of like the way it worked. And now what do I do? I got this Tesla. Nobody cares. So that's why we did the first, uh, that's what we did the first report. And man, when we saw the outside, I mean, we've got vi he's got videos yeah. on it. Uh, it wasn't very good. No, it was terrible. But that's then, not where the story was. No, the story, the story was under the, the skin. skin. Right. So never judge a car by the. So now with, with the cyber truck. Now with the cyber truck, you know what? You take a look at that flat floor and you know, all these other things that they've done. The fact that it's an exoskeleton, I've been trying to talk people into that for a, a million years or at least as long as I've been on the planet, I, and can't get anywhere, and he's come and done it. Tambor doors, you, you don't like them because you're worried. And I just was, you them. know, curious. Oh, it's all right. Hey, and you know what? This may, they may take your Tesla badge away. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so you think for 50000 a year, $32 million would pay for all the tooling on the car. Yeah. So I'm guessing... What do you have to amortize? Probably less than two hundred dollars a truck if they build it for five years. Is that right? That'd be about right. Actually, uh, I know that uh, marketing a car is about six or eight hundred bucks, um, and then you've got legacy costs like people that have been with the company a long. That's another six hundred and injuries and things like that. So for less than either one of those two, because he does no marketing really and truly. Right. You, his marketing is right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's getting it all for free. Did not buy a single ad for any of the car of the year stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they don't, no, they throw nickels around like manhole covers. So this is why he can come out and say the truck could probably start at $39,000. He's pulling thousands of dollars out every time, every time he does something because everybody wants to know about him. And we've, we've said this before. You know, go to anybody and say, oh, can you tell me who the chairman of the board is at Chrysler or Ford or, or General Motors or Toyota or Honda or any other car company? The only one they know now is Gosen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon we'll forget about him, too. <laughs> but oh, that's when the movie comes out. Yeah. That's when the movie comes out. Yeah, yeah. But everybody knows Elon Musk. Everyone knows Elon Musk, even small children. Yeah. I'm not right. kidding. I know, I know this to be true. Why do you, why do you think they came up with this clever approach that yes, you've been telling people for years and years and years, but 
Why them? Why now? Uh, it certainly didn't come from me. I did not talk to anybody at Tesla about that. I just think that uh, Elon Musk is um, is a genius, and uh, and he he decided he wanted to have something that was going to be radically different, and he probably talked to a bunch of people who are like me, off roading kind of guys, and um, and talked to people about the problems that they have with a normal pickup truck. I mean, if you had a bunch of folks like me that don't use a pickup truck to haul plywood or what have you, um, the only thing I'd want to haul is my quad or my bikes or whatever, then um, he would get a lot of good suggestions. And those suggestions, I think he, he took them all and, and packaged them into a vehicle. And to make it look entirely different and use an exoskeleton, I mean, it's not the first time people have talked about that. He just, he's, a, he's good at capitalizing on, uh, on good ideas. I, I think what probably drove it is he saw an opportunity to do a pickup, looked around and said, where the hell are we going to put this thing? We, we damn w for sure can't add a stamping line. I don't want to put in a paint shop. <coughs> uh, Franz, design me something that eliminates tooling cost, and I think he unleashes his people just to come up with real clever ideas. Well, I know for sure that he's got... He's got a, a, a lot of people there that are free to, to come up with styles and, uh, and inventions um, that, uh, that uh, um, normally a car company, you know, get to business. Uh, if, I, if you're not doing something for me right now, if you're not playing those cymbals every day, then you're out. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of like the way it works, right? What's he doing? Nothing. Get him out of here. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, that's kind of the way it works, right? So you've got a bunch of people now that are sitting around thinking up stuff and like what they do in the software industry or the uh, circuit, circuit board industry. It's a little different mindset, and that's kind of like the way he, the way he thinks. So I, I think he's probably had somebody came up and said, hey, boss, what if we made a truck that looked like this? You know, we have guys that aren't busy all the time at Monroe. And, uh, hey, you know what, I think we got an idea here. What about we do something like this? How could we, you know, interest one of our other customers into something like this? And the next thing you know, we've got a software development uh, plan or we've, got, um, uh, or we've got something that we can pedal to, uh, to a, a customer for a design idea or we've got something else that we can, uh, hey, have you guys ever, like our customers, have you ever thought of maybe doing this instead of that? Oh, let's give it a shot, you know, those kinds of things. And that's, that's kind of what happens when you've got a lot of